in a perfect world, okay, there would be pictures of tiny baby Teddy mm -hmm. and baby Ness. We have them. I know. We have and, video too. And then it would be them four years later after a pandemic really getting you know along. What? You guys, it was a very special reunion. It was actually, because I've had like a lot of play dates with him with new kids recently. And I was telling Sean, it, like looking back at that, that was shocking because they hadn't seen each other in years. And they literally just took, we didn't even Did notice and they left the room together and then we basically didn't see them the rest of the time. I know, but they It was like, kind of magical. It was magical. It was kind of magical. I, I actually. Like, ooh, like it was like, I'm just like, ooh, that was like kind of magic. I think we right? need to do that again. We need to yeah. do that again, right? Yeah. Um. All right. Lindsay Broads, Lady Broads? That's not your name. Broad. Broad. <laughs> no. Lindsay Broad, ladies and gentlemen, mostly ladies, let's be honest. You are a prolific actor. You really are. <laughs> That's I'm... putting it very generously. Shut up. You're brilliant. Thank You're you. funny. And I mean, we're here to talk about like mom life, but I have to say like we can't ignore the fact that like you've been working so steadily and happily this whole time as a mom of two. No. Yeah. Oh, as a mom of two. Yeah. But yes. not when Teddy was born? No, I didn't work. After Teddy was born, I couldn't get arrested for like 18 months, 17 months. I didn't know that at all. Oh, like nothing. But you did like – Never in my life, never in my career. I like couldn't get arrested. But you weren't like I, – I, I guess the I know why, why I didn't – What? I think I know why. Oh, why? I think because I was like becoming a new person. And so how can you – like, uh, there was just too much shift in my own life going on to be able to, um, uh, yeah. Like, play your instrument. Yeah, like your whole yeah. Instrument it was just changed. not my focus and my whole instrument changed. Well, you were like, play, it's like playing the violin and like you still have the bow, but then it turns into like a viola. You know, like it's a different thing. Yeah, it's similar, I think I like different. became a different... I think I went from like being a nurtured person to being a nurturer. And I think that's just like a completely different energy yeah not saying that now I'm doing completely different work I'm not but like I think that I'm sh certain I was not in control of like my instrument at that time not saying that I couldn't have worked but I just think that there's a reason why if there if there has ever been a lull in my career that was the lull you also were falling madly in love with this yeah, person totally and I look back now and I'm also like not angry about it because I was able to really 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 focus in and I don't think then I had to leave until I was until he was just well on his way mm. I was thinking about this today because I'm leaving tomorrow at the drop of a hat essentially for like five days to do a recurring role to do yeah another well, recurring role you guys to do yeah to do something and I was like well and I found out yesterday and my kids are now old enough that it's like chaos for my husband but it's not the chaos of leaving a baby. It's just like a well, different you, thing. But you brought Harry with you. I brought Harry with me. Yeah. Well, so I went back to work when Harry was four weeks old on a show in Canada. When there was a measles outbreak. When we thought when that there was, was a an measles, outbreak. When there was a measles outbreak. And it was several, several episodes, but on and off and on and off and on and off for like a 13 episode season. And so I was just bringing him with me. Which – and the thing was he – I found out once I got there, I spent the whole first month obsessively pumping mm -hmm. so I could bring milk with me. And then once I got there, it turned out that the milk that I'd been pumping, I had something called excess lapace. Have you ever heard of this? I don't even know yeah, if that's how it's it goes, pronounced. It goes, it goes bad. It's, it goes bad basically. If, if you, you don't freeze it or something. No, or do if something? you don't boil it. Boil it. Okay. You have to boil it. In my case, it was like you leave it out to figure out when it turns. And my, in my case, it turned in the fridge. In my case, it turned in like 24 hours. Yeah, my friend Jesse actually donated breast milk to me in the very early days of nursing Ness. Mm -hmm. And so did my friend Aiden. And the bags looked so different and I wasn't sure what was going on. I also didn't know what was going on in general because I just had a baby for the first time. Yeah. But sh she had the same issue um, and like happily breastfed for a long time. But until she could figure out what was going on, why the baby wasn't taking any bottles, yeah. it was a bummer. Well, so he just wouldn't – basically what ended up having to happen – I mean, I just had him with like a really lovely babysitter 
come to work with me and he would just, you know, I would just leave and nurse him in mm. between. Which I don't recommend this, by the way. I don't think that th – there's like no heroics here. It was just I had a job. I wanted to know that I was working. And looking back, I don't necessarily think it's super healthy to go back to work immediately after I, having a baby. Like I don't think it's like emotionally healthy for anybody. I mean – But it all, I did it. You did it. It's a it all, funny story now. Yeah, and great pictures. Great, great photos, great content. I mean, it was great. I, I, lo I love watching the journey. Very I, I, cool content. I could, I could, I could binge on your um, Instagram um, page forever for like a, many reasons, but also because it was very cute to see a tiny little baby on a film set like that. Yeah, it was. And it to was. see a, a woman, a working woman. Admit that like this is hard and probably not great, but also I'm doing it and that's I was doing awesome. you know, it's like I feel I look back now and I just think it's a shame it had to be that way. It had to be that way, to be perfectly honest, because the actors union doesn't have any maternity clause whatsoever. So I've had health insurance since I was in my early twenties. I've always more than earned my health insurance. And after I had Teddy, there was a period where, like, my base period, which is how you earn your health insurance, I didn't earn it. Like, I, the, when my checks came in, didn't fall in that earning period. And I lost our health insurance. That just happened For to six me months. And we had to Cobra. And it was a fortune. So expensive. It was when I was pregnant. And so I had no choice but to go back to work with a one-month-old because SAG-AFTRA doesn't take care of their members. And, yes. I, I, we could talk about that forever. And I'd like to at dinner. But also, uh, the actor's life is not, you know, we just, I, I, I think you have had an amazing career <clears throat> and have the skills and talent to, to know that you're going to book another job. And we just don't know. No. So like, if you're going to get a, 13 episode arc and you have a healthy baby and a good supply and you're gonna take it we're all yeah. gonna take it yeah it was absolute chaos and you know if anybody ever like needs tips for like living in a hotel with a baby I can't say that I nailed it but I did it I'm like so. okay so what are the tips go oh my god um well first of all so I contacted a friend of mine who is an emergency room pediatrician because um, she's really good for anecdotal advice. So whenever I have like a safety question about when do I flip my kid in a car seat, like what – she's always a good person to ask because she has a lot of anecdotal experience. Oh and so, you know, I considered putting him in a doc -a And she was like – I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. You can cut it. She was like death trap. <gasps> death trap. Um, I just sold mine. I just resold so mine. Many, so many infant deaths. Oh. Death trap that the baby pillows, they're not, they're meant for lounging. They're meant for the babies next to me taking a nap and I'm like on my laptop. They're meant for that. They are not meant for overnight sleep. If you think about it, it's a pillow. They roll over. They're they put their mouth against a pillow. It's a pillow. So where did he sleep? So he slept. What she advised was um, I ended up putting a crib mattress on the floor so that against a wall – so that in the middle of the night, if I wanted to feed him, I could just um, lay on the mattress and feed him. But also, um, at, at what ended up happening was I just took the blankets off the bed and all but my pillow, and he ended up sleeping with me in the I bed. actually loved that experience, by the way. I, I also did that with my yeah. second, and man, I had no, I had no choice because he didn't, for whatever reason, he didn't sleep in the hotel, and so he was up every two hours <laughs> oh for God. like – Months. And, and then once work. he was four months and he was on solids, I felt like – I was like, well, his digestive – you know, like if you're if you're talking exclusive breastfeeding, which I managed to do with him, his digestive tra tract was already disrupted by the time he was four months because he was on solids. So at that point, I didn't feel like I needed to bring him with me anymore. Oh, so you just um, – <laughs> so he, you were – COVID, guys. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. I like ran here, so yeah, anyway. but also, isn't it so weird? Like you cough and all of a sudden – like, Sean and I are like, it's nothing is more embarrassing. Nothing. It's like humiliating. To like just be a regular person. Like if person one of us is somewhere and we like cough or clear our throat, we're like, this is so embarrassing. I like, mean, it's the worst feeling. I feel panic head mm -hmm. to toe if I have to cough. 
Well, guys, I was PCR tested today. So. Okay, great. Everything's yeah. going great. I mean, I don't feel panic when you cough at all. Like, at all. Like, I'm like, everyone's fine. We're doing yeah. great. But when I cough, like the social fear that's, that I'm going to kill you. You can dude. feel the eyes on you, too. That's you know? so also, weird. We need to. It. I just, I don't know. We need to get over it. We need to get over it. Yeah, I think so. But too. that's a that's another conversation. That's a whole other thing. Where were we? Oh, okay. Here's what I wanted to ask you. Okay. Okay. When I was conceiving of this podcast, which is really for people who are not parents. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I get it. Yeah. Now I get it. Like, they're curious about being a mom, mm-hmm. but they don't know. <clears throat> they have questions, right? I thought like. I thought of you immediately because I was like, this woman has so much fun with her kids. Yeah. Like, if I were not a mom yet, I would want to follow you on Instagram and see your cute kids. <laughs> and I had a lot of chronicle. people confessing their secret pregnancies to me. <gasps> like, a Why? lot. Tell me. I've had so many people that maybe I vaguely know in real life and also strangers be like, I'm eight weeks pregnant. I haven't told anybody. <laughs> but we're just going to tell you? Yeah. Like, many times. I also always know when someone's having a boy. Because they'll start DMing me. Like maybe it's somebody I know or somebody like a friend of a friend. And all of a sudden they're like responding to like my stuff. And I'm like, they're having a boy. Oh, for, because by the way, guys, Lindsay has two amazing little boys. One who is nearly five, Teddy. Yeah. And Harry, who's two. Yeah. Okay. But why do you think it is that they come to you because and I not think that, say their husband? I think that a lot of people – oh, oh, well, no. I usually think at the point that they tell me their husband generally knows that they're pregnant. Um, although there is one person where I was the first person to know she was pregnant. But um, I think because – so I think I was one of the first of like my class of actresses in LA. And by that I mean there was like a group of – girls who all auditioned together coming up for maybe 10 years or so. And I feel like I was the first of that group to have a baby. Mm -hmm. And so I think in terms of like um, other actresses, I think a lot of people look to me to be like, can you do it? Yeah. But like other people in general, I mean, there are like thousands of people who follow you, myself included, who like just delight in your delight, not, I think. Not women. I'm followed by like mostly men. Whoa. Yeah, it's like really a Plot bummer. twist. No offense Good. to like any of the men who are now listening to this who are following me because they I, – I, yeah, I'm followed by like 84% men. What? Yeah, I have like no mommy followers. What? It's a bummer to me. That's what I – that's who I want to follow me. No, it's not women. Until Okay, so uh, it's like what, horny, you're, you guys are like welcome. sweet horny dudes. At Lindsay Broad. What? Yeah. I'm a I'm a mommy and I follow you like yeah it's so fun but you post mostly baby, baby stuff baby stuff yeah I don't get it but it's also funny because like sometimes there's dudes who follow me I get a lot of I get a, actually I get probably more communication from dads than I do from moms because it's mostly men who are following me oh yeah what do they have to say about it's about usually that? just like if I if I post something but I'll tell you what's really funny is I was saying to Sean the other night. I like posted like I was asking a question about um, cementing over countertops and I got like a gazillion responses and I said to Sean I was like because I'm followed by like a bunch of dudes. How does Sean feel about that? I mean it probably oh, I think it makes valid. him proud. Proud? Yeah. Because you're so hot and I think fun. he likes it. I like it. Oh my gosh this is very <laughs> exciting. I also think you're very validating of the boy experience. Yes. That's what I think. I think that um, – um, anybody who is afraid of having a boy, like I keep saying that I should be like a gender disappointment doula Tell because, me. um, I, listen, I had gender disappointment about as bad as it gets with Teddy yeah. when I was pregnant. I was legitimately horrified and scandalized by the idea that I was going to have a boy. That there was a penis living inside your body. No, you know, here's the thing. If I had already had a girl and the second one was a boy, I'm sure I would have been completely fine with that. Um, Actually, no, I would have been fine with that. I think I probably would have preferred that to have one of each. But I wanted to know I had a girl. Like, that was super important to me before I had children. Um, Any, like, I think I personally think of women as people and men as pets. Oh my god. Which, wait, <laughs> like men as little animals or something. But your dogs were both girls. I mean Louise is a girl was a girl. Yeah, well Louise Rest is a peace. person. 
to me. Louise was a dog, FYI. Louise is my dog who was killed by a German shepherd on Manhattan Avenue in Greenpoint. That's a whole other story. It's anyway, a, it's a, that's another story for another day. It's another story for <laughs> that's another day. The, that's when we come back to talk about health insurance. No, but the truth is that um, Laura is a, is a dog mom also, and that's a real thing. Like, you are a very good yeah. dog mom. And I remember seeing you at a voiceover audition at Janet Eisenberg's. No shit. And that's where I met Louise. And oh you brought God, yeah. your dog. You brought both of them. Was Joni no, there? No. Probably just You Louise. brought your dog and like she was so well behaved. And it was yeah, a moment. Was actually perfect. When I, when we finally met as like boy moms, when our kids are six weeks apart, I was like, this is the most amazing mother. And I Aww. knew, I, I, I knew because of the way you treated Louise. Louise was the best. And I, so I mean, actually like I remember saying to Sean, when I found out Teddy was a boy, when I got the call from my OB, um, I immediately just went for a walk. Like, I took Louise and I left the house. I, like, didn't want to deal with my husband. I was, like, annoyed with him. Um, I was – I think my mother-in-law was there. And – Your mother-in-law who My has mother-in-law two was visiting, boys. who has two boys. And she's so – she's, like, the sweetest woman alive. And I think I remember my husband said to me that he was like, "Yeah, Lindsay just like went for a walk. We found out it's a boy, and she's like, you know, everybody else is really happy, and she's like the only one who's upset." And she goes, "And me, oh. <laughs> I know." And so, like, I know, I think she, but that is to say, so I ended up with what I think was part of depression. I was depressed for my pregnancy. Yeah. I felt like I was like I don't know how to describe it. Um, I felt like I was like ruined. Like I, I don't know what it was. I felt gross. Like, and it wasn't like I, I was like cute, but I felt okay. like I was like, I don't know, something about it. Just I think hormonally, and then that triggered it. Finding out that I wasn't having a girl, like real, and it wasn't that he was a boy. It, that it was that he wasn't a girl. Mm. It like really triggered something in me, which I think was just fear. Yeah. I think that, like, I am of two girls. My mother has two sisters. Like, to me, I and my dad is really, really sweet. My husband's very nice. And, like, I – but men to me are, like, a different thing. And I just associated having a child with having a daughter. Mm. And so I was – and also – and this is another part of it – is that most people – most women I know, even if they won't – even if they say they don't care, most do want a girl. That's just the truth. Not all. I know I have a lot of friends who are like, I only want boys. But most women I know wanted a girl. And to me, it almost felt like a like I was like embarrassed. Like I felt like – and I, all my friends would be like, are you okay? And I'd be like, no, I'm not. But that was sort of the assumption was that like, of course you want a girl. And I, I was in an elevator with Dreama Walker when Teddy was like a year old and we were testing for a pilot and we were on our way down with all the executives – and she was pregnant, and they were like, what are you having? She goes, it's a girl. And they all went, oh, thank God. And I, that was how I felt. Everybody felt. And I was just like, I don't know. It, it triggers something in me. All that to say, when I got to the hospital, and they were like, he's going to be out in 20 minutes. And my first thought was, I thought I had till tomorrow. He came out, and I was immediately high. Immediately high. And had I, never been and I've never sober not since. Been high. Yeah. yeah, like just was high. Well, like, I remember you telling me that your labor was – you and I are the only two people, and so far we've had seven guests? We're almost at 11. Or at 11 guests. Whoa! Actually, you, you, you and I are the only two people I know who, like, liked love labor. Love it. We'll do it right now. We'll go and do it right now. Honestly. We'd love to have a baby tonight. I mean – Like, want to do it one more time. I know. I know. Okay. It, it, love it. Have you met anyone else besides me yes. who's – Okay, great. Okay. One great. person, but I don't know if it's public that she has a child. So I don't oh, say who it is. I'll tell you Interesting. After. But um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but also he came it. out like almost in his sack. Like he's this like Dalai Lama per – Like yes. he is magnificent. He, well, this is what happened. He came out wearing my face. He's blonde, <laughs> but at the time he was bald and I was – He was bald. Like I was, a, I was born dark and he had big blue eyes and – like no hair and what he had was white but he was like wearing my face when he came out like he had my exact lips and he had like very large eyes and it was like he just came out wearing my face he also was long and 
thin like yeah, you are. Yeah, he just forever. came out wearing my face. <laughs> <laughs> I have like a video of him and like mi- holding your heart in his hand. Yeah, it was just it was wacky. It was super wacky. And he's a really good baby. He was yeah. just like a really great, really fun baby. Well, like what so tell me what good baby means to you. Oh yeah. So that, I guess know, it's like like what does that mean to the to the folks fairness, in the back? To me, I found him easy. That's not to say I didn't have challenges. Like, you know, I like had like, he, at one point, like, his weight took a dive and I didn't know what was going on. Like, there was stuff like that. But I don't know. He was just, like, happy. Mm-hmm. He came out very happy. Mm-hmm. He was, like, an early smiler and an early laugher. And, like, he was just really cute and happy. And you could bring him, and similar just, to Louise, you could bring him anywhere. I just, but I, well, I don't know that I could bring him anywhere. I just did bring him everywhere. Yeah. And I, like, I just thought it was like fun. I, for me, when I had kids, and all, all this to say that like I think my life before that, I spent a long time like chasing the dragon, you know, like really just wait, feeling like I was waiting for my life to start. And to me, that meant a certain kind of level of career success, which. Frankly, like when I turned 30, I was just like, well, my dreams didn't come true because the dream that I had involved me getting here by the time I was 30. So, you know, and then I got pregnant and I, to me, that's just like when my life started. But also I'm very privileged in that like I haven't had to work a regular job in many years. So my free time, my days didn't have a lot of structure like, it was kind of just, like, I would procrastinate working out, and then I'd work out, and then I'd cook dinner, and I'd go to bed. Like, and yeah. that was, like, before maybe kids. I'd go on an audition. Yeah, before yeah. I had kids. Totally. And once I had a child, I was like, oh, now I have, like, a thing. And he's really, really cute. And he, and he was fun. Face. And the more work I put into him, the more I got out of it. So to me, I just loved – and we were living in New York, and I could just – do what I did before but with a cute baby so like to me it was very it just was like very fulfilling and the boy anxiety went away yeah it just so it's funny because I have two boys and I would say like I had 85% of the disappointment 90% 90 of the disappointment was with Teddy when I found out Teddy was a boy. I would say I had like a 7% disappointment with Harry, but like I at least knew I was going to like him, you know, like, and there's still like a 3% of me that's sad about it, that like yeah. would have loved to have had a daughter that still maybe would like to have a daughter. I don't hey. know. Um, you know, that has that window open. But also like I could, if I had another boy, I'd be in thrill with that too because I don't think – I just Teddy want everyone was, to clock that she just said that she's going to have three children. No, I just wanted to. No. That's what I, I heard. I, don't, I, think, I think there's an, a 20% <laughs> chance left that maybe we'll pull the trigger on a third attempt there's, to pull the trigger. We'll see. There's so much math there's in a this. Lot. Um, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot going on. But <laughs> with Teddy, I feel like Teddy and Harry are very different. And I feel like Teddy was almost like – Harry is what I conceived of a boy. Yeah. He's very boisterous and has a crazy amount of energy and is wildly funny. He's like super fun and super. He has an appetite also. Yeah. Yeah. He and Teddy to me. But again, I think this might be me. I think I project on him. Yeah. I think that's the first child thing. Like I project on Teddy. And I wonder what it would have been like if we'd had a daughter the second time, whether maybe I would have stopped. Because I know that I do it. But I look at him and I think I just put so much work into him. Not to say that I didn't put work into Harry if he ever listens to this. <laughs> but Harry had a different experience. He's a pandemic child. It's and a real thing. his brother was home during the pandemic when he was, when he was supposed to get his alone time. And t- Teddy, I just put so much freaking work into those first 18 months. That I do, and I know you're not supposed to, but I do view him as a reflection of me. Mm. I just do. He's he's also he also not is, in, he also is he's also not typically boyish. He's, he's very, very sensitive artistic. and very artistic and very like, you know. I mean, we were in the car the other day, and Sean worked a really long day, and Harry basically over the weekend 
we had people over on Saturday night and Teddy at 9.15 said, I want to go to sleep. And we said, okay, go up to your room. There were still people there. He said, no, 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 I'm just going to lay down on the couch. And in the middle of the party, he laid down on the couch, covered himself in pillows, turned off the light in the TV room and just went to sleep. Harry at eleven thirty was still awake. This is the two year olds. Just this is my two year olds tracking. And we and he he like relishes in Sean and me both giving him attention alone. Yeah. That is his crack. And so it's like eleven thirty. He's still awake. He's in a great mood because he's such an extrovert that he's so fed by the contact. And we're like, Harry, it's time to go to sleep. And he goes, I'm not tired. I don't want to go to sleep. And we're just like playing with him. And they're just they're very. They're very different. Meanwhile, my husband didn't give Harry a nap one Sunday, so he was exhausted on Monday. And it was just like, Monday was chaos. Monday was just was like Sean's first day back at the office and the whole day was, First day since the pandemic? Yeah, like first real day back at the wow. office. And the whole day was just chaos. And we're in the car and we finally got home at the end of the day. We had a thousand places to go. And I'm just sitting in the car and I was just quiet. And Teddy goes, Mommy, why do you seem sad? And I wasn't like being sad. I was just kind of like quiet. But he's so, <laughs> like, sensitive. Well, we're obsessed with each other. He's so obsessed with my feelings. I'm so obsessed with his feelings. Like, in it's a totally. What's funny with Harry is, I feel like that Harry is like unfolded. I feel like Teddy came out, and I was like, I know exactly who you are, and he's been exactly that since the moment he was born. And Harry, I was like, I don't know who you are. Like, who are you? Mm. And I've always had that sense that he was like his own person, which might be the first child, second child thing. Because they say, right, the second child is usually more rebellious or more, the first <laughs> child is more traditionally a parent pleaser Aww. and all that other stuff. And Harry, I've always just been like, okay, who are you? And it's been a different thing. But something that I think you mention in your writing – you know, on Instagram. <laughs> on Instagram, where I do all my best work. <laughs> it's so good. And also your photos are so good. They're so good. Oh, my God, you guys, if you ever want a great video to watch, like, you should just go onto her highlights and watch her children's first and second year Oh, the montages. first three years. Yeah, we do the first, first three, three years. years. Yeah. It's very good. Her, her husband's also um, a beautiful filmmaker, so it's a very good collaboration. But something that you write is that why don't we treat our boys like girls? And by girls, we're, you're referring to humans. Yeah. Because as you said, sometimes you think of girls as humans and boys as yeah. pets. And well, why don't okay, we? So, so this is what – because I've had at this point like several people be like, I'm having a boy. I'm having a nervous breakdown. What do I do? Mm. And what my advice is when people ask me that – is that like you're raising the kid that you want. So if you like ballet, put your kid in ballet. Ness takes ballet. Yeah. Like if you wanted to be a tap dancer, put your child in tap dancing, your child. There's no reason that you can't share all of the things that are important to you with your children equally. And I've seen some people who I consider very good moms who have a different relationship with their daughters and their sons. And I can't speak to that because it's not my experience, but who often maybe sh share it with only one of them. And I guess my response would be like, if you want to feel close to your child, then share the things that you enjoy with your right. child and don't project on them what you think they should or shouldn't do. By the way, I put I always wanted to learn to tap dance. I put Teddy in dance. He likes it. Like he was like, when am I going back to dance? I don't think it like set his heart on fire in the way that I'm now like figuring out what his interests are. He's very, very, very into visual art. Like oh, that's just so his good. thing. And so like, you know, we only we have only so many resources and I don't want to schlep like a thousand days a week and have him in a million different activities. So like, he was like, I want to do dance. And I said, well, you got to figure out what activities you want to do, you know. And so we tried it. I'm going to probably try it with Harry, too, because I want one kid who tap dances. Or if Teddy at five comes back and is like, I really do want to do that, I'll put him back in it. But, you know, my sense was that it didn't light him on fire in the way that some certain other things did. And I only have so many resources. Right. And you, tr and you tried. You know, it's like yeah. you tried. But, like, I have friends who who – 
maybe sign their boy up for soccer and sign their girl up for ballet. And that's very curious to me. Yeah. There's also this issue of like things being um, things being gender neutral, being like uh, of wanting girls to have all the experiences that boys do, but nobody seems concerned with boys having the experiences that girls do. I, I really hear that. And I was watching West Side Story. Was it last night? Because it feels like a million years ago. And yes, it was last night. Wow. I was watching West Side Story. And I thought of you because these boys, these men, these like 20, 30 year old men. Oh my God. Did you see it? No. They're dancing and it is glorious. It is these dancers are amazing and they're boys they're yeah. men they had to learn it somewhere they learned it and they're sharing it and it's like ah it, it it really lit me on fire and i thought of teddy i i wasn't sure if he was still tap dancing but i was yeah. excited to share with you that that ness does ballet now yeah he likes it more than paz does and i think like you're right like why are we so hellbent <clears throat> on our girls all of these feminist books this is really weird for me because I have these feminist books that people got me for pause, right? Uh, like, do you know them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But then I'm like reading them to Ness and there's not one boy in that book. And I, I yeah. think this is weird. It's weird. I feel like we're in a little bit of a cycle where, not to say it's an overcorrection, but where we are really, really concerned with empowering little girls and at the same time, Disempowering not, the white man. Disempowering the white man and and also not really – like the same attention that should be devoted to empowering girls should also be devoted to allowing boys to have like an emotional life. And I don't think we are f- as focused on that as we are on empowering girls. I, I and can't listen, agree with you Society more. still fucking sucks. Like women get the fucking shaft so – I'm glad we're doing that. I just wish that we were also like, hey, like a bunch of guys seem to be like shooting people and kids are really into like violent video games and like maybe we should be like talking to boys about their feelings and like honoring them as people and being like loving and affectionate. And, um, you know, there was an article in The Atlantic around the time our kids were born that was about – part of it was about how, you know – They always say, like, boys are slower developers. And I remember, like, a friend of mine, I was so – it, like, really got to me when the babies were little and I think her daughter was, like, chattering and and Teddy wasn't. And Sean was like, oh, I wish Teddy, like, was more of a chatterer. And she goes, well, you know, they say that, like, girls are just, like, more verbal and boys are more physical. And I remember being like, ugh, that, like – it, like, bummed me out because I was like, that's also, like, why people want girls. They want to connect and whatever. It's not at all true. Paz it's also is not much true. more physical. I know. It's funny. And, by the way, Ness Harry Babbles. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And so I think that, like, all of that is not – anyway, this article in The Atlantic basically said that girls do generally talk earlier, but it's not because they're more advanced. It's because mothers engage with daughters a lot more than they engage with their sons. Um, they talk to them more. They they just communicate with them more. And people project on boys a lot. I mean, Harry is incredibly boyish, and I hear about it all the time. People love to be like, what a what a little man. Like, I, he's I so, said that. And he, he, so and he is. And, and by the way, there's also nothing wrong with that. But – it's just it's just really interesting. Yeah. And sometimes I wonder, am I putting that on Harry? Because Teddy had a ton of energy too. Am I putting it on Harry because he's big? He's very large. Yeah, actually, you he's know what? He's tall and he's thick. And that he's was the strong. sensation I got when I when I was like reminded of what yeah. I said to you. Oh my God, he's such a little boy. I actually had the feeling of like my hands wrapping around his sweet like ball of a body. Yeah. Was, and I had that I had that same relationship with my um niece Sienna because she's big yeah so it's like a just a different thing than it's just holding a small so much of it is projection Mm -hmm. and so the thing is is like I always feel yeah I always feel like friends of mine are like how do I get a teddy and I'm like I don't know literally just do whatever you want to do that you would do with a girl just do it with a boy and like probably you're gonna get like some really sweet kid who's like obsessed with his mom and also like is into some of the stuff that you're into. (laughs) Like, I don't know what to tell you, you know. But, like, last night, I've probably raised my voice to him less than five times ever. And it doesn't work. It does not work. Um, 
he doesn't deal well. He doesn't like when people are angry. Yeah. And he will listen. If I tell him something, for the most part, he will listen. And all it does when I – if I raise my voice to him is it's like scares him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that might – we might not – we might need to work on that. Like he might need to learn to deal with conflict in a different way. And last night I said to him, I was said, is it the same way you sometimes get mad at me because you want something and I won't give it to you? I also – Sometimes get mad at you because I want you to do something for me that you're not doing. And the same way you raise your voice to me, I'm sometimes going to raise my voice to you. And the same way you love me, I love you. It doesn't change. Like just because I raised my voice at you and told you to sit back down because you kept running around during dinner doesn't mean I don't love you and you need to stop being afraid if I raise my voice because it's just going to happen sometimes because I'm yeah. like a person. And – it's just interesting. Like I don't – the way that his feelings and everything else manifest is much more what I would traditionally associate with the way that we think of how a girl feels. Like very emotionally, you know. And I can talk to him and say, this is why I need you to do this. You know, we we never really went through tantrums with him. Wow. Um, what? No. What does that even mean? Like he just didn't throw tantrums. What? I mean, not to say he never did. I mean, he's had a few times where like I can – where he wants something and suddenly he can't control himself. Um, It's probably happened like three or four times. But like, yeah, we didn't really go through tantrums with him. Wow. Harry so far, knock on wood, also like it's happened, but it hasn't happened super often. Wow. They're both like pretty happy kids. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's like a – like, Luck. <laughs> that's amazing. But I, I don't know. Because I was a tantrum. I was a tantrum. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, st- I still am. But like, <laughs> I don't I don't know that like unhappy kids throw tantrums necessarily, but it is pretty awesome that they don't. Yeah. They're they're just pretty, they're pretty breezy. Yeah. Harry's just more forceful. Like he's just louder. Yeah. And so, and he's, he's a little more, um, he's just a little more intense than Teddy is in every way. Mm-hmm. Teddy's more like buddha you know. Um, yeah. We have questions from the Mom Curious piece. We do. Sure. Um, oh, wow. So, so um, one of the things that I would love to get into is what is the best way to have fun with your kids? Oh, yeah. It seems like a simple question, but to someone like that doesn't have any children, it blows my fucking mind that like moms can hang out with children and enjoy themselves like really yes why okay but why do you feel that way (laughs) because it would stress me out it just seems like we are light years away all right certain things animals certain things this is why I really love what you were saying about like just do whatever you like to do with your kid yeah that would be a dream you know but how do you get them to go with the flow so so I don't really so here's the thing like with us we were living in New York. Our baby was born in March, the end of March. So it was sort of like spring turning into summer. And we just brought him everywhere. Um, I personally think if your baby's not colicky, which is like a completely different story, but if you just have like a standard issue baby, you can bring your baby wherever. You can, Especially if you like to wear your baby, um, if your baby likes to be worn, like – we took him – we just took him everywhere. I think it depends on what kind of person you are. So if you're a person who likes a lot of control and you want a schedule and you want all that other stuff, I think that it's a lot harder. But for us, our key to happiness with a newborn and an infant was to not have a schedule and not have a structure and just mold him into our life. Did you do that with both of your children? Yeah, with Harry I had to because he was um, – because I was working. That's not to say that was easy. That wasn't quite the same flexibility as just like having a baby and taking him to restaurants and bars or whatever else. But um, for me, baby wearing was huge, like huge, especially with my second because I was breastfeeding Harry and the convenience of – he probably spent 80% of the day in the carrier and I would nurse him in the carrier. I would – like luckily my anatomy worked in a way where I could just stick my boob in his mouth. But it meant I could feed him on the subway. I could feed him wherever. 
And I remember with Teddy, I didn't know that. And I would always be like, let's get, I'd have him out all day. And at the end of the day, he'd be crying on the subway in the carrier. And with Harry, it never happened because anytime he would cry, I would just take a boob in his mouth and it was fine. I was really lucky to be able to do that. But I think for me, the flexibility and just deciding to mold him to my life worked really well for us. But he also wasn't – he wasn't a super fussy baby, so – But even as a toddler or, like, a kid, like, I like, how you do you – th- you still bring him around. Right? I like – I like – I'm also just somebody who really likes to be out and about all the time. And so I just like being out with him. We actually moved to a house and we're not living in the city anymore. And for me, that's a lot more challenging because – like, it's nice for the kids because they could be off and doing their own thing in the house. But I just like to be out, 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 out all the time. And I think Harry is a lot like that. I think Teddy likes having the space and the sort of like, you know. But, yeah, we just got them very used to being out. How do you compromise that? You mm-hmm. know, if you, you're in a situation – because I, I know quite a few of my friends have found themselves in positions where they've moved out of the city because of the pandemic and yeah. have kids either – trying to have another or have kids at different ages or whatever. And to kind of give yourself over to my kids like this so much, but I don't, is such Ooh, a yeah. selfless. Yeah. Can you speak to that? Because oh. I feel like that that's one of my biggest well, concerns. I want to like, say this, that I don't think my kids are happier for leaving the city. Um, I think – I think they're they have there's certain things like I think they're in a better school than we could afford in the city, um, things like that. But I don't think I think that happy parents make happy kids. So I actually don't know that my kids have been happier in the last year because I think that um, the move for us has in many ways been very fraught, and I don't, you know, kids ha- only know what they know. So if my kids, when we were living in Brooklyn and we lived in a railroad apartment and like their bedroom was in the middle of the apartment and they shared a room, that's all they knew. And so I think they were as happy as we were. I think that Hmm. having a house for me is really stressful. It's a lot more work. It's a lot more upkeep. And I think that that probably has affected their feelings, you know. So I don't – I was talking to a friend of mine who said, you know, like I think that moving out of the – you know, you live in the city for you and you move out of the kitty, ki- you move out of the city for your kids. It's like more selfless. And I was like, I disagree. I think there's a lot more hustle involved with having kids in the city. And so you have to work really hard as a parent to do that. And I don't argue that it's more, I think that it's easier in the traditional sense to have kids out of the city. And so I don't know that it's more selfless. I actually think it's maybe easier on parents who don't want to schlep and hustle all the time Hmm. yeah people really do like it I mean it's totally like up to yeah I mean and I'm finding things to like about it it's a thing we're doing right now and I do think you know actually you were the one who said to me you don't know what it would have been like if you were in the city yeah this probably for your kids was the right decision at the time that you made it and so it yeah it's it's been a very complicated thing but I don't really bring the kids into that because I think that like I, I I was really happy having kids in the city for me like I it just worked for me because I liked I like walking culture so I liked that on the way home from actually this kind of goes to your question earlier which is that I feel like for me I enjoyed having kids because I was still able to be me I still lived in the same place that I would have lived without kids. I still did the same things. I just had a baby with me and my baby was fun. And I feel like it gave me a sense of identity that maybe I was lacking. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I think the the most important takeaway for me, you know, suburbs or city aside is like the happy parents, happy kids. Yeah. It, the details don't actually matter that much. We have a really great question about the stereotypes versus realities of having different, like a boy or a girl, you know, if you want to speak to that. Huh. Listen, I would have liked to have dressed a girl because baby clothes are very important to me. Oh, that's the other, that's the other thing I would say about having boys. You can still shop 
for your boys and you will get more attention for a well-dressed boy than you would for a well-dressed girl because there's a lot of well-dressed girls. It's easier. If you dress a boy well, you'll get a lot a lot of attention and I feel like I know so many moms are just like I'm just bummed like I wanted to dress a girl and I'm like if you want to put in the work you don't have to put them in navy blue and primary green yeah polos like you can put them in cute clothes and you'll get a lot of attention for it so it kind of pays off yeah you don't have to give up yeah. I think that's what a lot of people do. I think a lot of women are like sort of disappointed. Then their boy comes out and they love their boy, but they give up the things that they were looking forward to with a girl. And then they have – maybe they have a girl the second time and you see you're like, oh, you gave up the first time. Oh, there's something else I need to ask you. So when you go away to work, right, like you're um, going to Montreal for five days. What, so who's with the kids? Like what's the what, – what's your like – you never, you never had a nanny. I just you get gig love, babysitters. You get gig babysitters yeah. and Sean is on duty. Sean's on duty as much as he can be on duty and then the babysitters are there to pick. And then I just find somebody to watch them to pick up the slack. It's chaos. It's, it is the – Happy it chaos. Is, yeah. I mean it's, it, it's, it's chaos but it's what comes – like listen, I could have somebody on retainer where I'm like I'm going to hire you 20 hours a week. I'll let you know what your hours are and that could make my life a lot easier. But I don't want to do that. I want to do the childcare. That's where the third kid thing comes in because it's like my mom said, she said, listen, you have a third kid. The problem is you have to work more. You're going to have to go away more. So you're then doing less work for the children that you actually have because you will have to make more money. You will have to work Mm. harder. You will have, you know. So I think about that with the third kid also because, like, you know, once you have, like, a two-year-old, you're like, but a tiny little hand. I know. Little, you know, you think about it. Um, but, like, I'm really curious about the children I have. Like, I just really want to. That's how Sean feels. Sean's like, I want to devote every inch of myself to the two that we have. Yeah. And I'd be horrified to take time away from them. Mm. I am different. I feel like I – when Teddy was born, I was just like, I want to do this – I don't think I'll be done after doing this twice. I feel mm. like, like I feel like if I had one more, You're so I'd good be at done. It. But I also just don't know if I don't know if it's the reality. Like I just don't know if it works. I think we my are, work is really chaotic, mm. and I just need to, I need to like figure out what that looks like. Do you? I I, I know we talked about um, going away for like long stretches of time. Yeah. Do you do you make do you have like a certain agreement with your agents where you're like I'm not going to go away for X I won't of time. so like it, we just take stuff as it comes this past summer I was doing two different shows that were out of town and it was a lot of travel and so afterwards I said to them like I don't want to necessarily recur on something else that's out of town or whatever but you know they send me stuff and they're usually very respect everybody's very respectful of me saying like this isn't something that I want to like take me away from my kids right now. Right. Um, should we tell the the good people of Mom Curious where to find you? Sure. I'm across social media. I mean, literally just Instagram, Instagram, and I guess I'm on Twitter, but barely at Lindsay Broad. And what shows are you on? Because it's multiple at this point. <laughs> um, well, I was just on American Crime Story Impeachment, which. I have no idea how you're going to find it, (laughs) but it'll be on Netflix at some point in 2022. Um, I'm going to be on Julia on HBO Max. Don't know when that's going to air. And I'm doing another show, which I guess I'm I'm about to go do Ghosts on CBS. Supposed to be very popular. Supposed to be very good. People love it. Um, I don't know because I have I just got that job and I'm about to go do it. And by the time this airs, I will have done it and it'll probably have aired. So, <laughs> Lindsay Broad, you're like a genuine inspiration oh, for me. Thank you. You really you are. are well. <laughs> Thanks. No, but I really mean it. Like the fun you have with your kids and like the the advocacy you do for these boys. You know, it Listen. means a lot to me as a as a boy mom. Can I be a boy mom if I also have a girl? I don't like boy mom and girl mom. Okay, fine. Listen, I don't like it. So as a mom, I don't like it. As a mom, I think it's I think it's really special, and Aww. um, I like seeing you on my TV. So same back at you. <laughs> Thank you very much. For more episodes, make sure to follow Mom Curious, available on all podcast platforms. Thanks. 